Hi, this is Eric Durek, and welcome to this edition of Med Health Fit, the TV show that integrates wellness and healthcare. And tonight, I am absolutely <laughs> ecstatic to have Dr. Kathy Groover from kathygroover.com, I think one of Santa Barbara's leading uh, health practitioners, communication specialists, therapists, stress management practitioners, national speakers, the list goes on. Thank you for being on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me, I'm really excited. And, 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 and I told you before we went on the air that I've been following your career for a while because I like to kind of know what's going, Santa Barbara is not Los Angeles, there's thousands and thousands of really mm -hmm. great people in LA, but Santa Barbara's a little more concentrated. And your name is, I, I saw you on the TEDx mm -hmm. uh, speeches, which we'll talk about here in a second. Uh, I've you know been to your website. I've seen some of the things that you've done in your career, the books you, you've written, and, and just your travels and all those things. And and uh, I said, you know, she's somebody I got to get to know. And through the, the you know the, the folks here at TV Santa Barbara have had the show now. This like I said, this is my sixth season, and and I've really got a chance to know some really really interesting mm -hmm. health practitioners. And I put you right at the top of the list. And one of the reasons I do is because not only are you a health Practitioners, practitioner, therapist, etc. You also do a lot of work in communication and leadership, and mm -hmm. I am a huge leadership person. Uh, I had a neighbor who worked for a publishing company, and mm -hmm. a lot of the work that he helped to publish was in leadership. And so he would give me these books, and I was I'm fascinated in in America what people are doing. So I'd like to have you tell me a little bit about how you've segmented yourself into really becoming an expert in leadership, management, as well as health promotion. Yeah, you know, um, thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. uh, I followed the breadcrumbs my entire life. So I actually started out as an actor and um, had this weird parallel path of acting and massage. And I thought massage would be the perfect sideline to cover that extra time with all those, you know, award-winning film roles that I was doing. And um, <laughs> the film roles never came, but the massage stuck. And so it was something that I just naturally fell into. I was so good at it, and I just, it's been part of my life, pretty much my entire life. Mm -hmm. um, and then I started learning more and more, and I started studying human behavior. I was a psych minor as well as a theater major. It was just always something that was interesting to me. And so as I started branching out of massage, and I started doing more things like hypnotherapy and some coaching and the speaking, I realized, okay, so what am I heading towards? The Stress came very naturally for me. Um, because and, you had it? <laughs> well, yeah. As, as an only child type A, anal retentive Capricorn, I have a little bit. Um, and also uh, the communication aspect of it. Because I've been w observing human behavior and as an actor, as a performer, as an improv performer, I realize that I have these communication skills that I can impart to other people. Because when we have a communication breakdown, we always assume it's the other person. Right, we're fabulous communicators. It has to be that other person who misunderstood me. I have a TV show. Right. Of course you there? do, right? I, I lecture all over the world. Of course, well, I'm listen, a phenomenal I have a wife. communicator. She's always telling me. I, I, I know. know exactly. So. We're here just to set you guys straight. That's there what it go. is. Thank you. Uh, so I just, I, I, I went into the conscious leadership aspect of it because the what I do with the presence and the mindfulness and the consciousness work fell right into the leadership aspect of it. And then the communication, I, I really sat down and said, I need to be doing more than just stress. And the communication aspect kind of struck me and I went, yeah, I start, started studying NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, mm -hmm. and that's all about communication and about making yourself better to interact with others. So that's that's sort of where that came from. It's, it's all just branched out of the massage and the acting and I just follow the breadcrumbs. I, I find it I, I, interesting because I, that is one thing I did not know about you after doing my research is that you started out in acting. And I always tell people that I think that I'm reasonably good at public speaking because I did theater in high school mm. for four years. I was in everything and you know, yep. the, the, the comedies, the, mm -hmm. and, and I really think that that helps in this. Of course. You, you may not have got the Academy Award, but you know, it does, it, it lends itself. But my, my next question is about stress because stress mm. is becoming this, this in, in this country, in the United States, stress is becoming almost the big deal. It's, the, you know, they say, well, sitting is a new smoking. I say, have you, have, you, have you seen stress and what it's doing to people? Right. Go ahead. Yeah, stress right now is linked to 60 to 90% of our doctor's visits. It depletes our immune system. It destroys our communication. Communication. We can't be good leaders. Uh, we tend to res uh, react rather than respond. 
Um, it messes with our heart, it messes with our digestion, it messes with our sexual function, it messes with our sleep. You know, I mean, pick something, everything is affected by stress. Mm -hmm. And what I so appreciate is there are now so many doctors who are turning to meditation before medication. You know, they're asking about stress levels, whereas before they would, they didn't want to talk about that. They didn't have time to talk about Bob's ulcer. Um, they had time to uh, say, here's your pill. They didn't want to hear about his stress level. They just assumed it was, you know, they were so happy when they discovered H. pylori. They were so excited when they could say that an ulcer was caused by this thing. But people who had H. pylori and no stress didn't show signs of the ulcer. So at some point they had to go back and say, I think we're gonna talk to Bob about his stress. Mm -hmm. you know, and they hated that. And now we're starting to get to a point where they're, they're recommending med meditation and mindfulness. And this is becoming more mainstream. It's not this hippy dippy thing from the 60s anymore, yeah. thank God. Well, but it's interesting that the, 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 the initial research on stress was from hmm, Harvard. <laughs> right, and that's where I studied. Right, exactly. Uh, so, the, yeah. you know, the, 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 just the geniuses in mind-body medicine. And when I showed up there, and I'm not an MD, um, when I showed up to study the first time at Harvard and I was in a room with 150 physicians, it was a little intimidating. Mm -hmm. um, but I talked to so many of them who said, I'm taking this back to my practice, I'm taking this back to my hospital, I'm taking this back to my clinic. These, um, these techniques and these tools that people can use every day, they're simple, they're not necessarily easy. Uh, you have to practice them, but it can make all the difference if we get rid of that stress. Mm -hmm. No, and, and I, I just, when I was in college, all the years I spent, uh, you know, I, I was an athlete as an undergrad. So mm -hmm. I, the stress that I was under was physical. But as a graduate student, I was I had more and more stress. I did have some, some issues, and I really got into just the whole breathing thing. Keep yeah. it simple. And I got my breathing. My heart rate went down in the 40s. I said, "This is the best stuff. This was mm -hmm. really great." And I'm actually having to come back to more of that now because after two kids, and you know, 20 years goes by, poof, yeah. just like that. It's like, well, okay, I got to work on some some stuff now, but um, uh, you speak nationally. Yeah. What are some of your main topics? So stress is the main one. I do a five keys to stress reduction. Uh, the communication is the second one that I get booked for the most say what, how to communicate anything to anybody. And I'm working on the book that goes with that program now, which I'm really excited about. So those are the two main things. I also talk a little bit about nutrition. I've done a lot of talks, interestingly, for tour bus operators and bus drivers. Yeah, I know, right, yeah, you think, wait, wait, what? So it becomes a combination of the stress reduction and nutrition at that point, because you figure they're sitting all day, they are keeping really poor hours, um, they're in a bus, so they're not able to pack a lot of food that they can take with them. So I go through a whole wellness thing for them. I talk about stretching, I talk about the stress, I talk about nutrition. I've done that for 911 dispatchers, for first responders, nurses, teachers, veterinarians, everything, mm -hmm. because everybody's got stress. So it was so tough when I was starting my speaking practice and everybody said, well, who's your target audience? And I said, anybody with a face, which of course is not the answer you want because you want to still just like writing your dissertation, make it more and more right, specific, right, right, more specific, right. more, specific mm -hmm. more specific. And I love speaking for um, high stress men is who I end up in front of a lot because my, my techniques for the stress reduction is not woo woo. I'm not going to ask you to talk about your feelings. You don't have to hug it out and sing Kumbaya. I'm very practical. And I was raised primarily by my dad. I'm a huge football fan. I use a lot of sports metaphors and football stuff. So the guys relate to that in a way that they don't. If someone comes smelling of patchouli with all the beads and says, we're going to meditate now, you know, that first responders aren't going for that. Um, so I'm just more practical and more mm -hmm. down to earth. And I really relate well to the high stress men because that's what I grew up with. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I, I'm still processing the bus drivers here because yeah. <laughs> I, I, I normally drive, if I have to go to LAX, I normally drive. I just had a, I had a system, but the system broke down this year because parking lot C, half of it was closed down. Oh. So I was like, where am I gonna park my, you know? And so I, I took the tour, uh, took the Santa Barbara Airbus first mm -hmm. time in years. Oh my. I mean, that's like, that's got to be so, so stressful. And then the guys in the plane, you've got to speak to airline pilots. I never have. Um, I approach every conference that I can think to approach. I'm constantly answering calls for speakers. I can only hit so many industries. Right, uh, right. I don't know that I've ever, um, I think I have submitted to pilots. The problem with a lot of conferences is they want people who speak on that industry. So they right. want pilot related stuff. Forgetting that it's the soft skills that are gonna keep you sane. Right. And it's great that you know the latest technology and that you know um, you know the new codes and the book and da 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 da. But I have submitted for so many conferences who because I'm not a member of that union, I'm not a member of that association, they don't want that topic. And mm -hmm. I think that's I think they're really missing something. Because if you're not taking care of your employees, your staff, your 
attorneys, your doctors, right, whatever exactly. it is, yeah. then they can't do their job, mm -hmm. especially with things like airline pilots and um, the tow tower people and, you know. Um, oh my God, that's gotta be the, the go air traffic control. Oh, that's it, thank you. has gotta be the, the most, yeah. one of the most, I'm, I'm, I'm a huge fan, fan of flying. I don't fly as much as I used to, but I like to watch some things on YouTube and I watch these people uh, like landing a 747 at, you know, in LAX and all of the checklists and stuff they have to go. It's fascinating mm -hmm. stuff, but then you hear the people from air traffic yeah. and they're, they're, they're calling down this plane versus the other. I mean, there's like three, like go flying in LaGuardia. There's, there's planes everywhere up there. Yeah. And it's just, and for them to be so cool and to have, they mm -hmm. just know exactly, you know, turn to heading 214, et cetera, this guy over here. And it's just, it's amazing because most people have no idea what the heck's going on up there. Oh, yeah. They sit in an airplane and, ooh, the, the flaps, look at that over here. We're going to go shopping. Why are we still sitting here? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, you've just flown across the country. Yeah. You could have walked. Anyway, so the other thing that you do, I mean, you said you're outside of your coaching and your speaking is, is massage. Yeah. And th was that the first sort of health thing that you did? Yeah, that was the very first health after, thing. After acting, of course. A d during acting. During acting. Yes. Um, I actually apprenticed very accidentally when I was in college with a woman who taught me how to do massage. Mm -hmm. And um, I, would, I didn't have much to do during the show. It was um, Treasure Island and there were no women in the cast. I had one thing to do at intermission. I changed the pirate flag. Oh, in Las Vegas. No. no, 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 in college. In college. No, no, no. Okay. Uh, we did the play Treasure Island. Treasure Island, yeah. that's it, okay. I didn't have much to do. So this woman showed up and she was doing massage on all the students and I had nothing else to do, so I sat there and watched. And over several weeks of doing this, she finally said, Kathy, I gotta go to my other job. Can you take those mats and go work on that other kid? And I was like, no, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> and she kind of looked at me really deeply and she said, yeah, yeah, you do. And that was my first foray into slightly professional massage and I apprenticed with her for three years and then when I got to California that's when I really started studying and pursuing mm -hmm. and so the massage turned into I mean I've been doing Reiki for years herbs homeopathics all of that stuff and then I started doing the more studying and I got into the naturopathy the masters and the PhD and then the, the coaching and the stress and the if it's just it's snow I would be in school all the time mm -hmm. I would be in school all the time if I could. Mm -hmm. I love learning because the more I know, the more I can help others, and that's the whole point of this. Right, well, that's, that's, a good, um, that, that's a good way to look about it. And, and again, I, I see the internet. I, I see a lot of these learning platforms mm -hmm. online is, is something that you can do. I mean, massage, obviously, hands-on. Yeah, I can't do that virtually yet. I'm trying, no one wants to, to pay me for that. It's very so. selfish of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I actually, have been watching the industry uh, because I've, I've been interested in massage for a number of years and I did some sort of pressure point work at the university years back and a lot of stretching programs. Mm -hmm. I still do a lot of stretching classes at the university and I just see that, uh, like we have a gentleman in town I'm trying to get on the show, Bob Cooley, who has the stretching oh, yeah. company mm -hmm. and uh, Massage Envy has stretching along with massage. So I, I'm seeing people and a lot of personal trainers have, mm -hmm. they do massage or you know stretching, et cetera, et cetera along with what they're doing. So I see a lot of, a lot of combo things, but I would imagine with your massage, you, you, that you do just that, and then you would do just coaching, so everything you sort of segment in terms of. Yeah. Um, yes and no, I mean, I do Reiki also, which is the hands-on healing work, and mm -hmm. so as soon as I put my hands on someone, that starts. So they kind of get an extra zing during their massage. Sometimes I'll end for 10 or 15 minutes with the Reiki specifically if they would like that. It's not normal that I do that. Um, Coaching happens every place I go. It doesn't matter if it's Starbucks or a wine event, or I end up communicating with people and doing this sort of like mini coaching sessions on people. That has come out of the massage for years. People tell me everything, uh, which I enjoy. I mean, to me, it's that's part of the healing. If you wanna to talk to me about whatever your issues are right now, and I've always had the knack of asking the right questions, referring people to the right thing, the right book, the right tool, the right whatever, which mm -hmm. is why I suddenly realized, why am I not coaching more? I mean, I essentially am during the massage, if that's where the conversation goes, of course. Mm -hmm. So uh, to me, there's a combination there, but as far as like the massage therapy and the hypnosis, totally separate things. Um, I typically, if I'm gonna do like a nutrition session or something, that's a completely separate thing. To me, it's just easier that way, because if I start to combine things, then where are those lines? Right. So when someone comes for another massage session, am I, are they doing hypnosis? is too, you know, Capricorn, put it in a box, make it separate. I don't like my food touching either. Well, I was going to say, you're working <laughs> on somebody's feet. Oh, but, but the, you got to try the chocolate thing. Right, right, yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I get that. So as we spoke about before uh, we went on the air, I'm a huge fan of the TEDx conferences. Uh, I'm in the process of applying for the local one. 
uh, for next year, and I, ha I know a few people in town who have done them. I think that it is a, um, a sort of a windfall for people who have things they want to share and never mm -hmm. really had a platform to do it. And this thing has exploded. I don't know nearly as much about it as you do, other than the fact that I love the things that people talk about. So how did you get involved? What do you talk about? Mm -hmm. What's the best thing about TEDx that you can explain to the audience? Yeah, TEDx is really cool. And when I decided about five years ago that I wanted to make sure I was going to be a professional speaker, I had been doing speaking, but not, not a lot and not much paid. And I realized, no, oh, this is like, this is my future. I want to be doing this as a full-time thing. There were two things that I decided that in order to be a professional speaker, I needed to do. This was just my own take on this. I needed to be a member of the National Speakers Association mm -hmm. and I needed to do a TEDx. Mm -hmm. Those were the two things I wanted to do. I called the NSA, I looked at all their requirements and it was strict requirements. You needed to prove that you did 20 paid talks in the last calendar year. You need, I mean, it was like crazy. I literally squeaked by right as one of the talks would have fallen off the 20. I did another, I was able to join the NSA. And I thought, okay, I need to do some TEDx. And so I started looking around. Um, it, it's hard, it's really hard to find the TEDx's. There's not like one site that tells you, here's where it is, here's the person you contact, here's the theme. You've got to hunt people down. It's actually really difficult well, to well, find them. Santa Barbara has one, oh, sure. and, and I'm on their list, so I get their right. stuff all the time. Yeah, but I mean, there's one in so many cities. <laughs> right. And mm -hmm. um, I ended up finding one. I connected with the gal who was doing it. She was amazing. We connected via phone. I remember sitting in a hotel in Boston because I was just about to speak at a conference there. And we hit it off. And she's like, what do you want to talk about? And I said, I want to talk about trapeze because I'm a trapeze artist. I know. And um, <laughs> she said, yeah, let's expand it into something else. So I turned it into three little stories with three words each. So it was go for it change your focus, and why suffer twice was the theme of my TEDx. Mm -hmm. um, and then I did a second TEDx in La Crescenta, which was on us versus them, and how we're basically dehumanizing others to make ourselves bigger. I don't know if you notice the country's a little divided right now. Really? Just a skosh, just yeah. not much. But yeah, so I talked about that. I, I, I'm working on that as a book as well. I interviewed dozens of people to this point about this whole concept of us versus them. and. Uh, I love that both talks were so much fun. Mm -hmm. They were so much fun. But it's interesting because everyone's like, oh, you must be famous now and you must be. That doesn't happen very often. You know? And the reason we do the TEDx's is not to launch your speaking career or not to be famous or not to whatever. The point really of the TEDx is to touch that community. And I took that very seriously when I did both of them, both of my talks. Mm -hmm. um, some people jetted in, they jetted out, they didn't talk to the community, they didn't stay with the other speakers. You really, that's your obligation. It is for those live people in that audience. The bonus is you get the video, you get on the site sometimes. They don't put every video on the site. Mm -hmm. um, and hopefully that you're looked at as a more professional speaker if you've done that. Well, I mean, I think so. I mean, not, yeah, not that sure. you never were, but but after watching uh, one of your TEDx talks and just seeing other people do TED and, and learning about how mm -hmm. the TED uh, platform grew from this, what was up yeah. in Berkeley or wherever it was at, just this small group of people who started talking, and now it's this... It's, it's, and the way that they promote it is that, you know, we're communicating these great ideas. Mm -hmm. and, and you're right, you might not be... You know, uh, there are lots of really good speakers in the United States. You know mm -hmm. the community as well as most people. You yeah. know, you've got Andrew uh, Andrew Weil and some of these people that are just they're just you could listen to them all day. Um, but one of the reasons why I have you on this show is because you are the only person I know that Eric Goodman in Montecito has been on TEDx and one other person mm -hmm. has been on TEDx, but he hasn't been on my show. <laughs> but, <laughs> but that's okay. But you but you have been and again I do mm -hmm. I do think that it is a notch above. It's like yeah. a PhD of of speaking and it doesn't mean that you're gonna be famous. It doesn't mean you're gonna be rich. That's not important. But you had to get your stuff together for that place. Oh, and yeah. like you say, you had to be a part of that community and that's that's really a, a it, it's a lofty ideal for people. It's it's something to shoot for. Absolutely. So I, I give you tons of credit for for doing that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and you know it does it does up your credibility, and that's why I realized it was those two things that if I did truly want to be a professional speaker that I needed to do. Mm -hmm. And so, and it's not just about a checklist. I mean, I, I, I took it very seriously. I was so honored to be on that stage the two times I was, uh, because it really is a privilege and so many hundreds of people apply to each TEDx. To get picked is really huge. Mm -hmm. But some people, they don't fit what the, um, you know, they just have a story they want to tell. They don't fit the criteria criteria of what TEDx is looking for. So mm -hmm. it's important to know what their, their topic is, their subject is, and make sure you're 
you don't just get up there and tell cute stories. I mean, that doesn't normally fly. Mm -hmm. um, what the theme of the event is, you know, right. you've got to do your mm -hmm. research, and the application process can be a little weighty, <laughs> you know. So yeah, it's a. It's I'm a done process. that yet. So oh, it's it can get yeah. But 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 speaking of your professionalism, you've also written a number of books. Your last book is called Journey of Healing. You've written eight, twelve. Uh, 8, 12, 14. Oh my gosh, I'm doing so much writing right now. No, um, I'm working on my eighth, which is the communication book, and I'm also working on a book on us versus them. Mm -hmm. I shelved that one, no pun intended, um, to do the communication book. So I have seven out there with 12 awards. That's mm -hmm. where the 12 came and 12, from. And 12, and it's an award. And, and that, that's, a, that's a good thing. And, and, and you've had some books that have done really well, mm -hmm. and you enjoy the process of writing, yes. as do I. Yeah. Um, I've got like I have over 100 articles in my computer that I have not submitted yet. And I'm, I'm writing like, you know, 10 at a time usually. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, and I and do all at 11 o'clock at night. Um, <laughs> so what about the writing? I mean, so when did you see yourself? You saw yourself as an actor, and then you mm -hmm. saw yourself as a massage therapist, so when, and, mm -hmm. and then a speaker. And But where did that thing sort of pop in your head that, I can be a writer, because being, being a good writer is also something that, that is very daunting. A lot of people, mm -hmm. You know, even my daughter, who I thought was the most talented writer in our family, decided she didn't want to do it anymore. Yeah. She got rejected too many times. Yeah. And she just said, I'm done. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was sad, but it's the way it is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You have to have a thick skin in any of these professions because there's constant, re you know, well, I mean, in life, there's constant rejection. That right. you just have to des decide that you're not going to take that personally. You might not like my book. That doesn't mean I'm a horrible person. Mm -hmm. right. So um, the way I started writing was actually. I had said I was at a conference and there was a woman there who had clearly written a bunch of books and she was a speaker. And I said, yeah, I really want to be, you know, I want to work on being a speaker. This was probably 10, 11 years ago. And she said, okay, well, what's your book about? And I said, no, 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 no. I said, I want to be, I want to be a speaker. And she goes, yeah, what's your book about? And I said, well, I don't have a book. And she goes, if you want to be a speaker, you need a book. And I suddenly went, oh crap, one more thing to do, right? So I talked to several other speakers and they're like, yeah, it really helps if you have a book. I said, well, I have a massage DVD. They're like, yeah, we don't care. You really need a book. <laughs> we don't care. I'm like, but I have a thousand copies in my garage that you can have. They didn't care. Uh, and so I realized, okay, if, you know, one, I can reach more people. I had started writing and doing articles for some, just some local publications. I started writing for Massage Magazine, Massage Body Works Magazine. Mm -hmm. And I realized, okay, I'm, I've always been a, a good writer. That's one of the things I always gravitated towards. I thought I'd be writing like crazy fiction or something like that, but... I'm writing something else, which is totally fine. So I started writing my first book, which was The Alternative Medicine Cabinet, which we ended up turning into a TV show. So that was really cool. And then I started writing more and more. I turned my dissertation into a book. And now with the seven I've got, I, I love the process because it's another way to reach people. And if you look at how people learn, some people are auditory. They want to hear a podcast. Some people are visual, mm -hmm. kinesthetic. They want to hold that book. Right. You know. So um, the other fun thing is uh, the most place I sell my books is back of the room after I talk because my books are based on what I'm speaking about, which is why I'm writing my communication book, because then when I do my communication program, you can continue your learning with this book. So they, they work so synergistically together. Mm -hmm. um, I love having the books. It's so much fun for me, and, and I love the process. I dictate most of my books because my brain works faster than my fingers, even though I'm a very good typist. Too. Um, so yeah, so I, on the, my trips to LA to go to uh, Trapeze and Magic Castle, I, I dictate in the car, and that's how I've written all my book, most of my books. Mm -hmm. All right, so I, 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 we, we've got enough time here before my last question, which is the real zinger here, is, you know, <laughs> is that so the, the trapeze is something that you just do because it's fun or it's a stress thing. Your doctor said, Kathy, you've got to do something or you're going to have a heart <laughs> I attack. I don't know any doctor that would say, go do trapeze. In but fact, they said they to do of, something and you chose no, that. No, I'm just, I'm an adventure junkie and I love trying new things because to me the, the, the human experience on this planet is so rich and why would I not want to try everything? Like that food and that drink and that activity, I just, I eat it up. I just, I live for that so you newness. So you jumped out of an airplane? Absolutely. Okay. Splunking, rappelling, ziplining, parasailing, paragliding, uh, swimming with sharks, swimming with dolphins, race car driving, helicopter, all sorts of things. So um, I, I will say yes to pretty much everything because I want to, ha I want to have that experience. Why would I not? Mm -hmm. And so about six years ago, uh, a client said, what haven't you done? And I said, oh, I really want to try flying trapeze. And then I realized, I said it. I got to go do it. And so she was getting ready after her massage, and I'm Googling where I can go do flying trapeze. And two weeks later, I was in Santa Monica on the pier doing trapeze, and I've been flying since. I've done, I think, 12 rigs around the world. Every time I travel, I try to find a new place. Cool. It's a mindfulness practice. It's a stress reliever. It's, I have family all over the world because every rig you fly, you just become so close with those people. So it's. Mm -hmm. I would imagine it's a pretty small community. It's a very tight knit community. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, okay, so my last, my last 
amazing question. Yes. <laughs> you, <laughs> I don't know how it came up, but you've never, oh, I guess it's on your website, you've never had a cavity. Right. Oh, you've right, You've never right. had a cavity. I have never I'm had only two ahead of you, but I guess that's pretty good considering that I've had a sweet tooth on and off for a number of years. But by not having a cavity, does it mean that you have this like very strict diet or you never go to dentists or what's, what's the... Nah, both those things are not true. Um, I go to the dentist every six months for cleaning. Mm -hmm. My biology is such that I don't get cavities. It's, it's and right, and, and what's funny is my hygienist all the time says, just keep up what you're doing. And I'm like, okay, because I don't really do much. She's like, oh, you floss so well. And I'm like, no, I don't. You know, uh, that's just my, it's just my metabolism. Well, I, it, somebody told me, because I have the same thing, is, is you know, is that I've never really had, you know, lots of cavities. Mm -hmm. My wife, my son, my wife is just, you know, I just, and again, I think, I don't know if it's the enamel, I don't know what mm -hmm. it is. I'm not an expert in tooth <laughs> hygiene or whatever, but I, I've been really lucky and it sounds like the, so, all right, so your take on our current medical system related to stress and overall health improvement, A plus, D minus? Oh. You know, I got to go with Marion Williamson on this one, which is we don't have health care, we have sick care. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't do preventative. We are not addressing things like our food supply. We're not addressing basic nutrition. People are not taught these things. You know, I have not done geometry once today, but I have communicated, dealt with stress, dealt with relationships, um, dealt with my own thoughts. Dealt, you know, those are the things we need to be learning as well as all this academic stuff. And mm -hmm. we're not set up to succeed in that aspect of our lives. And then the medical system doesn't help because it wants to throw a prescription on it. You know, between us and New Zealand, we are the only two nations that allow advertising of yeah. pharmaceuticals. And that's, to me, that's just heinous. I mean, like, why are we, go talk to your doctor. And the doctors are like, oh no, please don't come talk to me. You know, um, we're not encouraging healthy weight. We're not, well, we're encouraging it, but not in any sort of meaningful way. Mm -hmm. Because you can't just say to somebody, you should blah, blah, blah. Right. First of all, you can't start anything with you should because you lost them. But they don't say why. They don't say why this stuff's important. And though kids tend to ask why and, parent, and adults ask, how <laughs> I think we need to be asking why more, and we need to be told why more. Well, and I think and that would I, and change I everything. That, that, and and, and th that's a topic. I mean, th th this last question could be a topic <laughs> oh, for yeah. another interview Absolutely. because. And, and 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 I told you before we came on that that you know I will be doing you know I'm going to be inviting mm -hmm. some some people back. So maybe at the end of the year we can have you and really talk about that because yeah, stress in healthcare is is I think something that's which which is the paradigm shift. Mm -hmm. How can people get a hold of you? Yeah, the best way is my website, which is just kathygruber.com. G-R-U-V-E-R. -E v is in Victor, E-R, Kathy okay. with a K. And all my books are there. You can find out that I've got videos. My TEDx is there. Probably some trapeze videos on there. I, there is a trapeze video. That's, that's yeah, oh, there's, a couple years YouTube. ago when I first saw you. Is oh, I said, yeah. oh, my God, look what she's doing. Yeah, and so. my YouTube channel, and I'm on all the social media. So, Fantastic. Yeah. And, and I know you, you like I say, I'm, I'm just totally smitten with your with your profession, with you. Uh, you know, you're one of the top professionals in this community. I, I, hopefully, we can promote this. Um, and I would love to have you back, and, and maybe we can get you back at the end of next season. So for MedHealth Fit, uh, this is Eric Durack. Thanks for watching, and thank our guest, Kathy, Dr. Kathy Groover, for being on the show tonight. Thanks, appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thanks for having we'll me. We'll see you next time.